Once more, the time machine is activated to take us back to August of 1900, which doesn't make a lot of sense because we left off in August of 1900 anyway. Hey, I just like using the spinny newspaper thing. As we left our heroes aboard the steamer city of Venice, they were headed toward certain disaster in the Buffalo Ship Canal. Well, actually, it's just a normal day in a busy harbor. We know a lot about the city of Venice now, but there are a lot more boats to identify and discover today. First off is the Clarion. She arrived on Saturday, August 18th, under the command of Captain Nelson, with 10,690 bushels of barreled flour aboard. Built in 1881, she was an iron-hulled composite package freighter, measuring 240 feet long. She had spent the entire season so far hauling sugar into Buffalo, but now she had aboard flour. On December 8, 1909, the Clarion would catch fire while steaming into Lake Erie, downbound from Chicago to Erie, Pennsylvania. She had aboard a load of merchandise and barreled flour. Fifteen of her crew were lost in the wreck, but six were rescued by the oarboat L.C. Hanna. Moored next to the Clarion is one of the classic Erie Canal boats. These boats normally had their names written on their stern, so there's no way to positively identify this one. It is clear that her crew are taking on some of the Clarion's barreled flour. Except for this guy. It is likely that this fellow is her captain. Since there is no way to correctly identify this canal boat, there is no way for me to give you her history. They were as common as pickup trucks. Because their names cannot be clearly read, the remaining boats were identified by their configuration matched to the vessel passages of the Buffalo newspapers. This boat was the most difficult of the bunch to identify, because she is one of the more obscure vessels of her time and is rarely photographed. She is the Gordon Campbell, and today she's under the charge of Captain Larson. Constructed in 1871, she was one of the earliest dedicated package freighters on the lakes. This image of her is one of the most detailed ever found. She's seen here with a dart's leg, unloading her cargo of 87,000 bushels of oats. Sold Canadian and renamed Strathmore in April of 1906, this little steamer found herself in a wild Lake Superior gale on November 8th of that same year. The storm drove her onto the rocks a quarter of a mile off Mishapakoten Island on the eastern end of Lake Superior, where she rapidly began to break up. All 14 of her crew took to the lifeboats and made it to the island safely where they found the shelter of the lighthouse. When news reached the Sioux, it was stated that the boat had burned. But eight days later, when her crew also reached the Sioux, they reported that there had been no fire at all. Ten days after that, when Captain Sinclair, the Detroit insurance underwriter, reached the wreck, he found that the boat had indeed burned. But that fire had taken place after the boat had gone onto the rocks, and he reported that the cause was unknown. This is interesting, because the boat had hull insurance only against fire. The insurance company still paid off the full $15,000 policy. Directly behind the Gordon is another wooden package freighter, the Lycoming, which was Captain Wright's command and delivered 18,700 bushels of barreled flour. Constructed by F.W. Wheeler at West Bay City, Michigan in 1880, the Lycoming would survive just 10 years, 2 months, and 2 days after this photo was taken. 
On October 21, 1910, she would burn on Lake Erie. Having been converted to a lumber hooker in 1906, the Lycoming was seeking shelter from the Lake Erie Gale at Rondo, Ontario, when she struck the break wall there and caught fire. In one of the few images of the Camp Bell, we see her early in her career rafted to the Lycoming. So this isn't the first time these two boats hung out together. Behind the Lycoming, we see a wooden laker taking on fuel from a coal lighter. This is the Ferdinand Schlesinger, under the command of Captain Crane. She was identified because she is the only boat in the Port of Buffalo over the past 72 hours with a name that is as long as the one we see on the stern. The Schlesinger just dropped off 132,000 bushels of corn hauled in from Chicago. She's now on the way back to Chicago with 3,300 tons of coal. Her career would come to an end on May 26, 1919, as she sailed across Lake Superior in fair weather. For no known reason, she suddenly developed a bad leak, which quickly overwhelmed her pumps. Her captain gave the order to launch lifeboats, and the crew abandoned the vessel. She simply settled down into the depths of Lake Superior, as the passenger boat, Essenobia, picked up her castaway crew. Next on the list is this vessel, that we see peeking out from behind a grain elevator. Some of you may know her from my previous video titled, What Are They Doing to That Boat? This is the package freighter Delaware, which would later be renamed the Charles B. Hill in 1905. And that's how she appears in the earlier video. In 1906, she would be caught in a Lake Erie storm and driven ashore near Fairport, Ohio. There she would break up and sink. Check out that other video of mine for details and a much better look at this freighter. At length, we have this lake boat out on Lake Erie, departing Buffalo. And we know who she is, because in the vessel passages, she is listed as the only bulk carrier with two stacks that departed Buffalo the same day as the city of Venice. This is the Robert Mills, built in 1888. And she survived all the way until she was abandoned at the start of the Great Depression. She was dismantled in 1932. That leaves us with only the city of Venice herself. Just like most of the other boats, she too ended up on the bottom of a lake. In the fog of August 4th, 1902, less than two years after we visited her in this program, she collided with the steamer Seguin on Lake Erie, just outside of Rondo, Ontario. She sank in just 15 minutes. Perhaps it's time for us to head back to the future. I mean, who knows? Maybe our visit just jinxed all of these boats. Well, except for the mills.